we're recording I'll just do that as a sound test and then um, so my interviewee today is my good friend and colleague Miguel Rodriguez um, I wanted to do this special recording mostly because Miguel and I have been through a few years of edu coffee and this is our first time just uh, meeting up after four years of doing lots of conversations virtually <laughs> so um, here's my questions for Miguel so Miguel how long have you been teaching I've been teaching for 20 years in Tech de Monterrey. Anywhere else before? No, I actually started teaching as a cathedra or part-time teacher in Tech de Monterrey, Campus Monterrey. Then I went to do my PhD, do some research, and came back to Mexico in 2004, and cool. I started working in Puebla Campus. Since then, I've been a full-time professor there. Cool. I, I either forgot or didn't know that you were Catra in between, because I know you studied here. So, what what led you to becoming a professor? Well, I was offered after finishing my master's here in Monterrey campus uh, a couple of courses, and I enjoyed it very much. And I decided to pursue a career as an academic. And professors I had here in Monterrey suggested to me that I should do a PhD if I wanted to become a full-time professor in Tech de Monterrey. Cool. All right. Thanks, Miguel. Um, so you said you've been teaching for like 20 years. So what, I mean, this is not going to be a three-hour video, but what have you learned about teaching over those 20 years? Probably that we have to stay humble, that we learn every single year. And in the last few years, probably the changes have been too, too many. I mean, every generation sometimes takes years to change, but now we have the pandemic, and then we have social media, and then we have videos, and we have recording devices like these mobile phones that everybody has. So uh, changes are becoming too fast now, and we have to adapt, and we have to remain humble that uh, thinking that we have always something new to learn. Nice, I like that. Um, so, so both of us have been teaching a long time, and we're right now at the National Reunion of uh, Professors of the Tech de Monterrey, and um, we're encountering lots of new colleagues or ones we've seen a long time over the years. What What is the advice you would give to people that are just joining us and becoming new professors? Probably the best advice I could give is to find friends, like Ken has been to me, that can be a mentor, or who, people who can direct you in the right direction. And, uh, people are always open to share their own experiences, but uh, sometimes new, newcomers, new, new teachers, new professors, they are afraid of asking because they might think, oh, I, I was hired. As a professor, I should know how to do things. I, I don't want to ask because I might look like weak in my profession. But I think, as I said in the previous question, we have to remain humble. And there's always somebody who does the things better than we do. And probably those are the best ones to approach or to get uh, nearby and ask them questions. And I'm sure most people will be open to share their experiences and to guide you in the proper direction, depending on the university that you are working or where, where, where you're starting your career as a professor. Yeah. I like that. I like that you're, you're kind of saying that we just keep learning and we never stop right. learning. Awesome. So with that point, what about our colleagues that have been teaching as long as us or maybe longer and are are dealing with changes of the environment of how we teach or, or the models we use to teach and the, and the change of generations. What's your advice to teachers that are trying to change their discipline or their practice? Well, probably to relax and enjoy the ride. I mean, sometimes people who resist the change, they suffer. And we have seen many colleagues here in our institution who have left because they didn't feel comfortable with the new educational model that is com a complete change in what we have been doing the past few decades. So, yes, to be open, to, to be open to change, and again, I, I will not get tired of repeating this, to stay <laughs> humble, because, <laughs> I mean, we can still learn if, uh, from newcomers, new professors, new people, new generations, new 
I don't know. People probably from other countries that we are also getting here in Tech de Monterrey. Nice. Like all videos, we I think we found our title for this one, my friend. Yeah. Uh, so, so to switch gears, tell me about your YouTube channel. Miguel's got his, his t-shirt on today. He gave me a hat and like he does to lots of colleagues about the Dr. X channel. Tell me, uh, have my tell me about your channel. How did, how did it start? It started because I found myself repeating the same explanation or the same tutorials to students of architecture around 12 years ago, probably a bit long, longer than that. And they were not coming to class because of the time of the day that the lectures were taking place. And they were coming just days before the, fi the partial exam, the part final exam, to explain, for me to explain to them the whole month <laughs> in a day, in a few couple of minutes, and it was impossible. So I decided to, to, to record videos like uh, PowerPoint presentations with audio, me explaining it. I was staying late uh, in the office to record the videos with no noise from the colleagues, no noise from the office. Uh, but they were very boring videos, long videos, 45 minutes videos, probably a one hour video. But when the students were coming for me to explain the topic again, I said, let's just take a look at this video. I was prescribing them uh, a playlist of videos and then it was just for my students. Then I decided to open it and the channel just exploded uh, in YouTube. I have many followers. Most of my followers are from outside my institution. I have followers from all over Latin America and, and even Russia, people from Latin America living in Russia, in Australia and Japan. So I'm all over the world with that. Uh, technology. So I, I was going to ask you what motivated you to create the channel, but I kind of, you kind of answered that. Um, maybe what, what gave you the decision to make it the, or the confidence to put it on a YouTube channel as opposed to just private videos that you shared with your students? Well, it took me a while to, to take that step because I was getting some resistance or bad comments or criticism from colleagues and I still remember some of those people talking on my back saying I will do videos if I had the time to do them well mm -hmm. implying that I was not doing <laughs> them well but I just, uh, as I said before the main reason of me having a channel is is that the material is for my students and if they appreciate it and people from other countries appreciate it I even upload it now without even any editing or, or it's just the flow of yep. putting material on the web day after day nice. in a single semester kind of kind of like this the audio is not going to be great we've cut the sounds in the background and people walking by but um, uh, I think these kind of videos as well have value. So I'll leave you with one last question. I was actually talking to a colleague and he was uh, talking to me on the plane about wanting to create his own channel and start doing this. What, what's your advice for n people deciding to create a YouTube channel or a video channel? Probably close to what I said uh, before of uh, finding a mentor. There's always somebody who's got a channel, probably in the same department, probably in the same university. And the, the first step is always the most difficult one. Once you have the first few videos there, don't be the main critic of your own material. Because otherwise you will say, no, this is not good. I will not put it on the internet. Just put it there and let the videos flow. And then they will, the comments that will come in will encourage you to continue your work because you will see that Probably for you the material was not good enough to be there, but for somebody it solved something or it was just what they needed to hear at that moment. So the magic is there, just let the magic do the, its work for you. Alright, thanks Miguel and we, uh, I, I was expecting three or four minutes and we came up to nine and a half, so awesome job, thank you my friend. Thank you and, uh, for the opportunity. This has been fun, alright? Yeah. And I'll hit the stop button.